opportunity for different problems that people may experience, such as anxiety and mood problems? Well, so the, um, I mean, there are, there are hundreds of studies that have been done by now uh, showing that CBT is, is effective in treating anxiety, depression, uh, substance use issues, obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, the list goes on and on. Um, now, what's what's not as often found is a, a benefit of CBT over other types of therapy. Mm-hmm. So we, we can say with confidence that CBT is really effective and most people who do it are going to get a lot of benefit. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I would not claim and, and can't claim based on research that... Um, that CBT is the only type of therapy that works or that it's better for all types of issues. There are some where that's clearly been shown, like for obsessive compulsive disorder, you really need a specific type of therapy. You need exposure and response prevention mm. for OCD uh, and, and you know, doing kind of depth work and exploration for most people is really not going to lead to, to progress for OCD, but, mm. but for other issues like depression, anxiety, panic, there's some good evidence that other types of approaches work, including psychodynamic approaches. Mm-hmm. So is there any evidence that CBT is better than just cognitive therapy or behavioral therapy alone? Uh, for the most part, no. So if you, they do these, what are called dismantling studies. So if you have a therapy that's cognitive and behavioral, then you take out the cognitive part and just do the behavioral, then mm-hmm. you tend to get about equivalent results or uh, you know, vice versa. If you, there are studies that pit a, a mostly behavioral therapy against a mostly cognitive therapy and find uh, generally there's no advantage. So, I mean, there are different ways we can understand that. One is that if you think of, of the two as doing similar things just from different directions, then once you've done one, you don't necessarily need the other. Mm. It's kind of like if acetaminophen and ibuprofen are both getting rid of a headache. Mm. Once you've taken acetaminophen, then right. if you also took ibuprofen, we wouldn't say, see, ibuprofen doesn't work. Say, well, yeah. the problem was, <laughs> was kind of taken care of at that point. Yeah. So, so yeah, when you try to get to really fine grained distinctions in what works in therapy, that's where we, we generally don't see, tend to see differences. Hmm. Interesting. I thought that CBT was actually the most evidence-backed therapy form, and even more so than, than the cognitive therapy or behavioral therapy in, in themselves, but apparently not so. Well, it's a good question, and it depends on what we mean by most evidence-backed. Hmm. So I, I think that it's easy to interpret that kind of, of phrase or, or even to use it to suggest that that it that there's that the evidence is stronger for that type of therapy than for another or even that that there's evidence that one works better than the other Mm. but a lot of times what we mean is just that there have been the most studies done Mm. on that type of therapy Mm. which is one type of evidence and it gives us more confidence if there are 13 studies showing one treatment works and two studies showing another treatment works you might go with the first one Mm-hmm. But we can't conclude from the 13 versus 2 that that one treatment is six and a half times better than the other or something. Right. You get to look at what's actually in the study. That's right. Yeah. I think that is what my intuition about the level of evidence for them was before, that the effect size of CBT helping people with, for example, anxiety disorders is greater than for either of the two parts alone. I mean, there, there may be individual studies showing that, but to my knowledge, when you put all the studies together, you mm-hmm. don't find a, a, okay. an additional advantage for one or the other. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm.